What's up brand builders, Stephen Hurahan here at brandmasteracademy.com and in this video you're going to learn about the best market mapping template to map a powerful position for your brand. So you can better understand your competitive landscape and expose the weaknesses of your competition. Now, if you're new to the channel and you want to build brands that go beyond the visuals and the logo using strategy, psychology, and creative thinking, then you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. If you want to fast track your results, make sure you grab the Pro Brand Strategy Blueprint. It's a free download and the link is in the description. Now, I recently created a video called What is Market Mapping? If you haven't seen it yet, it dives into the details of what market mapping is, their pros and their cons, and how to use them effectively. But in a nutshell, market mapping refers to the mapping of your market landscape. It's the process of using a graph to visualize a given competitive environment by plotting individual competitors using a set of two criteria. Now, the right set of criteria used to plot the map can help to uncover untapped opportunities or gaps in the market where consumers' needs are not being met. In other words, the market map in the right hands is a very valuable positioning tool. So in this video, I wanna give you a step-by-step -step template that you can use to map your market effectively. Now, like everything else in branding, achieving the best results comes down to robust processes that you can use time and again. So here is a step-by-step -step template that you can use to map your market or your client's markets effectively. Step number one, segment your market. So before you go identifying variables and plotting competitors, you want to get crystal clear on the market segment that you're targeting. Every market is full of segments that differ from each other in their desires, their fears, their challenges, their motivations, and of course, their buying decisions. Now, as I said, different market segments are different. A buying decision factor in one market segment that might be super important might not be even in the top 10 reasons to buy for another market segment. So don't stop at defining your market, get clear on your target market segments and exactly what they want. Step number two, define your variables. Now, as I've just covered in step one, buying decision factors differ from one market to the next or one market segment to the next. Now, the more intimately you understand the segment that you wanna target, the more granular you can get with identifying the decision-making factors that are important to them. Now, these factors make for the most powerful market mapping variables. So if you can uncover a gap in the market based on two really important decision-making factors, then you have the ingredients for a powerful positioning strategy. Now, remember, the more variables and combinations of variables you map your market with, the more likely you are to unearth a unique opportunity. Step number three, score your competitors. Now, before you create any market maps, you need some plot points to work with. Now, the best way to do this is to gather the data that you need in a spreadsheet. So in the first column, you wanna identify all of your market competitors, and in each of the preceding columns after that, they should contain the variables that you've identified. Now, each variable you use will have a high point and a low point. So for example, you might be plotting the price variable, in which case you have a low price and you have a high price. Now for each variable, you want to assign a value out of 10. An extreme low point should be scored at one, while an extreme high point should be scored at 10. Step number four, plot your market landscape. Now, once you have your variables scored for each of your competitors, mix and match the combinations across multiple maps. So for example, if you've identified price and quality as important variables, then you can use price on the y-axis and quality on the x-axis. Now, obviously, the more variables you use, the more combinations there'll be, the more maps you'll need. So when you've created your maps using your variable combinations, begin plotting your competitors' brands across each one of those maps. Now, if you've identified a laundry list of variables, then this may take some time, but as long as your variables are buying decision considerations, it is time well spent. Step number five, identify gaps and opportunities. Now, after plotting a series of maps based on your combination of variables, 
you'll be able to see your market visually, most likely for the first time. Now, depending on the combination of variables you've used, you may find that some maps display your competitors spread evenly across the map, while some of your other maps might have certain segments crowded together on one side or even one quadrant. Now, there's a book by W. Chan Kim called Blue Ocean Strategy. Now, the name came from the idea that red oceans are full of sharks, i.e. your competitors, while blue oceans represent opportunity. The congested areas on your maps represent the red ocean, while the free space that you have on your maps where there are no competitors, they represent the blue oceans and the gaps and the opportunities in the market maps that your market mapping provides. Now, as I mentioned earlier, market mapping has been used for decades. And in years past, most will be plotted with a pen and a paper and a ruler. Now, today we tend to use software for pretty much everything bar brushing our teeth. So here are some modern day tools that you can use for mapping your market. The first one is group map. Now group map is positioned as a real time online brainstorming tool for meetings, workshops, or any digital collaboration. Now the software allows you to create all kinds of different maps and then to share those maps with clients or colleagues. Another tool that I really like is Miro. Now Miro is positioned as a platform where teams get work done. In other words, it's the ultimate collaborative tool to create unlimited numbers or types of exercises, activities, or interactive maps. You can use Miro to not just create positioning maps, but to run entire collaborative brand strategy workshops. Now at the cornerstone of every brand is a strategy, and at the cornerstone of every brand strategy is a unique position. It forms the center point of the brand and everything else is created and expressed with that position in mind. Finding a unique position is one of the most challenging aspects in branding, which is why you need as many effective tools at your disposal as you can find. Market mapping is not rocket science, it's not cutting edge technology, and it's not foolproof. Now, once you've mapped your market landscape and identified a gap or an opportunity, you then need to define your position. If you wanna learn more about how to create a brand positioning strategy, then this video will help you out. Until next time, brand like a master, and I'll see you in the next video.